Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. It's time now for For Your Health, a service of medical pharmacy here in Bardstown and in Shepherdsville. And uh, joining us in studio today uh, is Allison Schwartz. That was your phone doing it. I thought, yeah, I thought you were anyway, humming. You, know, <laughs> you don't want me to hum or sing or make any kind of musical noises okay. while I'm here. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, today we uh, we usually recognize sometimes a month, uh, whatever is being honored or celebrated or recognized. And today you tell me that it's uh, Military Appreciation Month. It is. Uh, May is Military Appreciation Month, and so we wanted to start out and saying from Medica Pharmacy, we wanted to thank all um, current, past um, people thinking about it, anyone who served in the military to serve this great country. We want to thank you for your service. Um, and while we are thanking all of our uh, military people out there, we wanted to especially put a little shout out to Medica's own Brandon Mauser who um, has been with us for a few months now and served in the Marine Corps in the Infantry Division, um, was overseas. Um, he's got a lot of stuff he did. He was uh, on the EOT, EOD security team, which is Explosive mm-hmm. Ordnance Disposal Team. Um, he was a designated marksman. So we have officially titled him our head of security <laughs> at Medica <laughs> Pharmacy. So, um, And Brandon actually just is getting ready to graduate from the St. Catherine Pharmacy Technician Program, and he actually received the Best Practices Award from that program. So we're honored to have him. He's um, a wonderful addition to our staff. So if you've not come into the pharmacy to meet Brandon, please stop in and meet him. He's a wonderful young man. Um, and be sure t- this month, especially and every day, to thank our military for their service and all that they do. And do y'all have to do hoo or how is the Marine Corps kind of hoo You know what they do? Uh, uh, yeah, no, he's not made us do that yet, but <laughs> he does tend to try to keep us in line. So, <laughs> and yeah. you tend to listen. <laughs> we do. Yeah, he's a lot bigger than me, yeah. so I listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, now turn to medicine and uh, medical or health, arthritis. Yep, it is Arthritis Awareness Month. Um, And so one of the, you know, everybody complains of a little arthritis. You know, there's different types of arthritis. There's osteoarthritis, which is, you know, typically the one that, you know, I get out of bed and I'm a little stiff. My joints Mm -hmm. don't want to move. As I get going and moving, it gets better. And sometimes, you know, an anti-inflammatory might help. Or maybe you do um, omega fish oils or maybe you do glucosamine or hyaluronic acid. All of those things help with arthritis, but the more serious of the arthritis is, is rheumatoid. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that you see where the people have the deformed looking joints and really have a lot of issues. Well, that's actually an autoimmune disease. So as we talk about that, we're going to talk a little bit about autoimmune diseases um, to try to think of how can we improve, prevent, reverse these autoimmune diseases. Mm-hmm. So if you're not sure what an autoimmune disease, you know, auto is self immune. And basically it's your immune system attacks your body. Your immune system um, basically has to be able to differentiate what is normal and what's not normal, what's good and what's bad. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a little bit of a civil war in your body. Um, You might get um, an infection, a toxin, something you're allergic to. It could be a food product that you maybe shouldn't have eaten like McDonald's or um, something that's in a box or a package that we always talk about, all those processed fast food places that we really shouldn't eat. Um, Or you're under a lot of stress. You know, and I, you guys have heard me talk about stress multiple times and how bad it is for you. Well, all of these things create inflammation in your body. And any time you get systemic inflammation, which is your entire body tends to be inflamed, you are more of a risk of developing an autoimmune disease. So um, what's interesting is I was doing a little research on it is that autoimmune disorders occur almost exclusively in developed countries. So if you think about people out there in the poorer countries that don't have amenities like running water, toilets that flush, washing machines, and sterile, clean backyards that we spray for everything under Mm -hmm. the sun, they don't get these diseases. (laughs) So if you really think about the whole, you know, have to be able to differentiate good versus bad or what's normal to your body and what is a potential problem to your body, it really kind of makes sense. People that grew up on farms playing in the dirt, messing with, you know, growing their own foods, not, you know, washing their hands all the time. I mean, they hear me at the pharmacy all the time say, I'll be out riding horses, brushing horses, cleaning stalls, and I'll pick up something and eat it. And most of the time I don't go wash my hands before I do it. And that probably grosses a lot of people out, but I think that makes me healthier. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to introduce 
bad things to your body so your body learns what it needs to attack so if you're constantly cleaning and sterilizing and purifying and every time you get a runny nose or a little bit of a sore throat you immediately take an antibiotic your body never learns to fight things off on its own so eventually when you have something major it's not sure what it's supposed to be fighting so you end up fighting yourself and that's bad isn't that what vaccines many of them are just a little bit of that the flu vaccines a little bit of flu or uh, it's a, yeah it's a it's, little bit just to introduce it to your immune system so it knows what, it to, knows look what for. to look for yeah. exactly yeah. exactly so yeah the point of vaccines is that you already get that immune response going, going. so that you hopefully don't get yeah. the flu you know as you described it i mean our the human body how is miraculous and it's it's done done pretty darn good job for for uh, thousands of years exactly and um and now sometimes we uh for whatever reason, we, we, we've kind of sometimes maybe have, have, have hindered it in doing the things that it's done so well for thousands of years. Granted, we do live longer, but... We do. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and, and we do. And, and a lot of, if you really look at it, you know, I always tell people that aren't necessarily willing to make the changes to eat healthier mm-hmm. and they have, you know, various health, dis- health conditions going on that they could... Um, improve if they would eat the right foods and do some exercise maybe lose weight whatever it is I'm like you might live to be 90 Mm -hmm. you might live to be 100 but do you want to spend the last 30 20 years of your life either you're not mobile you're on 20 different medications and you're miserable or would you rather be like Dave Murdoch of the Dole Food Company who at 92 does 50 (laughs) push-ups every day and and rides his bike and rides his horses and is not on one single medication not even an aspirin because he eats right and he's active (laughs) (laughs) actually he had no pineapples on his um on his counter in the interview but because pineapple is a high fructose fruit and so they actually recommend you eat that definitely in moderation yeah (laughs) so I don't think he eats his own canned stuff he because he didn't have any of it in his house when they (laughs) interviewed him interestingly but he's 90 he was this was a few years ago he's 92 yeah Yeah. 50 push-ups every day and running on his treadmill and riding his bike around his property and you know climbs on his horses from the ground and I mean just an amazing does his own grocery shopping so that's what I would want to be like if I'm 92 I don't want to have to be 92 and be miserable and somebody else has to take care of me exactly so when you talked about uh, rheumatoid arthritis and the things that we visually see from people that are suffering from that uh, debilitating disease, what causes that? What causes those hands to close up and, and things? I mean, is that typically it's the inflammation around the joints, and you get okay. calcifications and and everything okay. else. But it, it's that inflammatory response of your body attacking your joints. You get mm-hmm. scar tissue, and yeah. um, you know some people have trouble even walking yeah. with rheumatoid arthritis. And we're starting to see a lot younger people. And, you know, and it's not just rheumatoid arthritis; it's celiac disease and psoriasis, and um, there's all kinds of you know this oh well whatever crazy syndrome. Multiple sclerosis is one of them. So there's all these syndromes that we're coming up with and they're new and well a lot of them are you know autoimmune things and we have lots of extremely expensive medicine to throw you on to help you and that's great because they can definitely improve your lifestyle Mm -hmm. but that shouldn't be the final answer that should be a temporary fix while we try to figure out what it is that's going on to cause that immune Mm -hmm. response to begin with I mean it's the autoimmune diseases are the eighth leading cause of death in women and we spend $120 billion a year compared to $70 billion a year for cancer on autoimmune diseases. So if we could get down to the root cause of those immune diseases and fix the stressors that are causing them in the first place, then hopefully we can, one, save a lot of money to the healthcare system and to the individual patients. But most importantly, hopefully we can improve these patients' lifestyles. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's, you know, the conventional treatments that are out there, like I said, there are a lot of them ridiculously expensive, um, but some of them make you feel awful and they increase your risk of diabetes and cancers and, um, all, all kinds of other things. And muscle loss is one of them. And you, once you start losing muscle mass, then, you know, everything else kind of goes along with that. You don't have the strength, um, you know, to fight off infections. And we all know, or hopefully we know that muscle burns more calories, burns more energy than fat. So if you're losing your muscle cells, then you're going to be more prone to gain weight, which is going to make you unhealthier in the long run. So um, there's a few steps that a couple of the functional medicine doctors that specialize in this um, have mentioned to kind of treat an autoimmune disorder. And I'm having a major contact problem here, so hopefully I can see see my notes. Number one is you want to check for hidden infections, and that doesn't always mean bacteria. It could be virus, it could be a yeast, it could be Lyme's disease, which is very difficult to treat. Um, And most people will tell you that as you treat it, it doesn't really stay gone. 
So, you know, get with your doctor, look for all the sources that could be causing that infl inflammation in your body. Check for hidden food allergens using IgG food testing or what if you don't have the money or the time to go do this testing. Um, Dr. Hyman recommends an ultra simple diet, which is designed to eliminate most food allergens. So go to drhyman.com and look for his ultra simple diet. Now, all of this information I'm talking about today, there will be links to it on Medica Pharmacy's website at medicapharmacy.net. Um, so feel free to check that out. You also want to get tested for celiac disease. Um, that's which a, is? That, that is um, a big time gluten problem. Right. Um, a lot of times it's milk proteins as well. So any doctor can test for that. Um, and there's actually some adrenal stress tests that'll tell you if you at least have a mild intolerance to it. And I know you're laughing at me because no. my right eye is running like crazy. <laughs> say, you, we need to pause. No, nope. oh, I need. can still see out of my left eye, but my right eye is bothering but, me. You know, we were talking about that at Qantas the other day. I don't know who they mentioned had been diagnosed with it, but uh, Congressman Guthrie, the first time I ever heard the disease was Congressman Guthrie was As in town mm -hmm. out at uh, Bloomfield Farms when mm -hmm. they were showing off their gluten-free Showing, showing off his mm -hmm. ribbon cutting, but discussing their gluten-free products. And he said that's why he wanted to make sure he came there because of right. uh, he had a, had a daughter with him. Yeah, and you'd be amazed at the stuff yeah. that has um, gluten in it oh, or yeah. even some of the – there are a lot of sugars and dyes that you can't use with celiac disease. And so mm -hmm. um, that's an opportunity that we're able to help at Medica because we can compound medications that have none of that preservatives, mm -hmm. no colors, no um, sugars, you know, anything like that in it to, to help – you know, treat that patient a little bit better. You also want to get checked for heavy metal toxicities. Um, you'd be amazed. Not the rock and roll music heavy metal. Nope, no, not that one. No, like, you know, specifically mercury, but, sometimes lead. Uh, mercury, big time, especially if you eat a lot of sushi, you're going to be a little bit more risk of having some um, higher levels of mercury in your system. Mm -hmm. So you want to address that for sure. Um, use fish oil, vitamin C, vitamin D, and probiotics. Those are natural um, substances that help to kind of calm down your immune response and help fight inflammation, especially the fish oils are great, nature's best anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. That being said, if you have a lot of inflammatory processes, you sometimes have to take 8,000 milligrams or more a day of a really good fish oil product to properly treat that inflammation. So keep that in mind. That sounds like, like a wheelbarrow full. but it's, <laughs> um, it's about, well, if you get the good stuff, the one we recommend is Eskimo 3 or Nordic Naturals. Mm -hmm. You have to take eight pills a day. And most people but, take two to four. Yeah. Two to four. Um, exercise regularly. When you exercise and you sweat, you sweat out toxins. So exercise is a natural anti-inflammatory. And then again, we're going to go to stress responses. You got to relax. So deep relaxation, yoga, deep breathing, massage, anything you can do to de-stress is going to help um, you fight any infections because when you're under stress, you get your immune system all riled up and it's looking mm -hmm. for something to fight. Yep. You know, it's that fight or fight, ah. the yeah. fight or flight. Your, yeah. your body is looking for something to yeah. fight. And if it can't find anything, it, it may fight itself. Now, I combine two of those. I like, as we were talking about jokingly, when I mow my yard, I like my push mower. That's my exercise and my de-stressing. I try not to think of anything other than don't don't get out of line, you know, make it make it look good. Do you make it look like a baseball field? Nah, I haven't done that too. <laughs> <laughs> Always wanted to do that. <laughs> I, I do uh sometimes go in, in different angles, but but that's that's kind of my um you know, whatever lo length of time it takes. I just kind of my clear my head out kind of thing and, and I do you know, that's the exercise. I know that's not enough, but that's well, I mean, but it works, you know, it, but something's yeah. better than nothing. Exactly. So, yeah, Paddling so, the boat down the one of our rivers. I know our boaters are going to go out and do some, I think, some cleaning of the right. the, the little riverways around here pretty soon. Now, that would be very exercising and stress stress reducing. Um, exactly. Anything, Except you get mad at people that, <laughs> that, that pollute and, and throw stuff in the rivers. But, right. Well, yeah. you know, and it's as simple, I tell some people, it's as simple as find, making two lists uh, when you talk about stress reduction. Make two lists. And make the first list be what are the things in your life that just exhaust you to mm -hmm. even think about doing them. And then make a list of things that energize you, make you feel good, you mm -hmm. like to think about. Focus on that. Get rid of yeah. the stuff that you just exhaust you. Don't do it. Hey, you know? Be careful now. I, luckily, my life can't be listing right now. Because you should <laughs> Because I, I know there are times I exhaust her from, <laughs> <laughs> from some of the things that I do or don't do. No, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, and the most important thing of, of taking these steps to treat an autoimmune disease is, you know, have real 
conversations with your doctors. And if they're not familiar with some of the, you know, underlying causes and this whole idea of functional medicine and really getting into the causes, talk to them about it. Send them to the Functional Medicine website, which is functionalmedicine.org. Um, you know, buy them, a, buy them the text box of, <laughs> a textbook of functional medicine. Um, but, you know, there's we're inundated with all the information from the big drug companies that we can mm-hmm. treat these diseases, but we're not really treating the disease. We're treating the patient to improve their symptoms to hopefully, you know, get them to where they can walk more or, you know, minimize their suffering. But in the long term, we're not really fixing them a lot of times. And so that's what we'd like to see is really improve the quality of life, not necessarily the quantity of life. Mm -hmm. We'd love to do both. But I would think for, you know, for me, and I know a lot of people that feel the same, is we'd rather have a good quality as opposed to a big quantity with poor quality. So we want to focus on that. You call it functional medicine. Functional Mm -hmm. medicine. Yeah, and there's a few of them um, out there. I mean, you know, most everybody knows who Dr. Oz is. Mm-hmm. Oprah introduced him to yep. the world. And um, we actually have, a, we do carry some of the products that Dr. Oz recommends, you know, like raspberry ketones, fish oils, um, coenzyme Q10. So we're, we're starting to expand that. Dr. Mark Hyman, Dr. Jack Cruz, um, they're all about... Um, instead of having you on 20 different medicines, they're all about using these maps of tracking every single symptom, every problem, um, every, you know, do you have a gluten problem? Do you have heavy metal toxicities? Are you, do you have allergies? And really mapping that into finding the very single underlying source because they all believe and they're having great successes um, in really changing people's lives is that most chronic diseases are all really interlinked to the one underlying problem. Perfect example that they use a lot is that we're overweight and so we're insulin resistant. And um, so you might get put on insulin if you get bad enough. Well, insulin makes you gain more weight and it can sometimes make you more insulin resistant. And sometimes you're on metformin, which makes you B12 deficient. And it's been shown now that all the statin drugs for cholesterol make you insulin resistant and they increase your risk for diabetes. So all of it is linked. It's not a bunch of different conditions that we're treating. It's really all the same thing. And so they're doing a lot of this, putting people on gluten-free diets, working with them with their stress, treating them for any heavy metals. But most importantly, because we live in this big stress environment, the nutritional status of our country is horrible. We're the most malnourished country out there. So they focus on the fact that food is the best drug that you can use. And so um, that's where Dr. Hyman comes in with the Ultra Simple Diet. He has a book called The Blood Sugar Solution. But all of them talk about, you know, the paleo diet, eating primal, like go to, um, I think we have a link to this one. Um, If not, I'm sure Garrett will put it up. (laughs) It's marksdailyapple.com, and he talks about being primal, you know, eat the way we're supposed to eat. It's not about the calories. It's about the content of the food you're putting in your body. And if you give your body what it needs, your body will treat itself. And they say, you know, it's like when you have a child who, a baby, who loves plums, and then all of a sudden they won't touch their plums they want sweet potatoes they said that's that baby's body's way of saying this is the nutrients that i need right now and so that's what they talk about feed your body correctly and you will live a much longer healthier life so they're really into the whole patient instead of today we're going to talk about your blood pressure and tomorrow we're going to talk about your cholesterol and then at some point we need to get to the fact of if we get your blood pressure controlled and your blood sugar controlled we really need to talk about what you eat and how you can lose weight they're targeting it all at the same time So it's it's interesting and it's a lot and is a huge change for the way we have been living here lately. And it's there's so many reasons why it's because a it it works exactly <laughs> and b uh, the cost of health care is everybody talks about it and and um, if if whatever we can do to keep ourselves healthier is going to save us and our country money and uh, and and obviously as you pointed out quality of life is is so important we. Um, you know, would hate. I've got a, a mother that's 93 and an aunt that's 95, and one of them's has a much better quality of life now than mm-hmm. the other. And you know, and it's and you can say, okay, uh, I, I see that. You know, it, I hope I make it to that age, and I hope I have the quality of life that the 95 year old actually is doing better than the 93. So you know, it's, yeah. And when people talk yeah. about the cost of health care, it actually makes me borderline insane because Uh-oh. I'm like the cost of Did health. <laughs> no, well, everybody does. Oh, their health care yeah, costs. Yeah, okay. You hear it every time yeah, you turn around yeah. and Oh, Obamacare is going to ruin our nation. And Oh, this and that health care, health care is cheap. Everybody can afford it. It's the disease care 
that okay. is breaking this country. I got you. So that's yeah. my problem is we don't have a health care system. We have a disease care system. And if yeah. we would each be accountable for our health, then we it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't, no. It doesn't matter because, you know, the, the pharmacy benefit managers that we process claims through. So you got there are going to be people come in. Do you accept Express Scripts? Do you accept Anthem, Humana, whatever it is? Those people are making a ton of money on the prescriptions that you fill. Mm-hmm. I mean, $37 million last year to the CEO of Merck Medco. I'm like, wh- why should he make $37 million on all of us if we would just eat better and take care of our health and he wouldn't be making so much money? <laughs> <laughs> and our country wouldn't be in so much debt trying to figure out how yeah. can we provide health care or disease care, as I say, yeah. to all of all of our people. So it, it's time that we really start to you know make changes. Is it easy? No. It's so easy to go eat on the 99-cent menu at these fast food restaurants. It's so easy. But it has monster long-term consequences. I better be careful and, and call it disease care from now on. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, the, and the savings we can get with health care. <laughs> exactly. And I know we're running out of time. We were going to talk about the fact that it was Mediterranean oh. Diet Month, um, and we're running out of there. But since we're talking about oh. food, look at our website. We'll have some information. There's lots of healthy ways to eat. The Mediterranean Diet is one that works for a lot of people. So get on there and get some information, and I'll try to talk about that on our next I show. I think I'll head to the Mediterranean just to find out first. That's a great idea. <laughs> great idea. I think it. Yeah, Santorini is gorgeous. Let's go. Oh, I'm in. We'll, we'll go on and start looking at um, good deals. Before you leave, um, this is an early reminder, but in, in June, the uh, fundraising event for the Nelson County Community Clinic is a 5K walk, run, push the stroller, whatever it is. And um, Medical Pharmacy is a, a main prime sponsor on that event. And, Th- that you is. Know, you know, yeah. and again, it's, you know, I, we don't care if you run or walk or push a stroller or I don't know if they'll let you ride a bike because that's what I prefer to do. I have to check into that. <laughs> but, but we are trying to get a plan to have some people walk. But, you know, just, you know, get out. There. And you may not finish the 5Ks. Who yeah. cares? But, you know, get out there. It's a, You know, if all else fails, it's a good excuse to get around with your girlfriends or guy friends or people you haven't mm-hmm. seen in a while and go for a nice little walk and talk and, and have a good time and, and feel good afterwards. And uh, Jan Tronzo from uh, – from the clinic will be here on the 30th of this month to tell you more about it so uh allison thank you very much for coming in and again let's remind everybody most if not everything that we've talked about today or i should say you've talked about today will be on your website which is uh, www.medicapharmacy.net we've done our job there all right yes i think so thank you allison we'll see you in a couple of weeks all right thanks